procedure bylaw or would that come under flags and proclamations? Um, we actually don't have anything specific for T-shirts. So flags and, pro flags and proclamations are actually under policies. Yeah. So we could obviously adopt a policy or change a policy or add a policy or whatever we needed to do. Okay. okay? All right, so it wouldn't come under the procedure bylaw. Then. We could, add, we, council has a purview to add anything to the procedure bylaw. Um, our current practice is, is mostly through policies. Okay. All right. I have a question, I guess, yeah. Because you started it. Okay. Uh, nothing about shirts, but what, uh, where in the policy do we talk about signs and buttons and things like that? Because we've had those issues over time. <laughs> where at meetings we've got a lot of yeah. sign holding and, and we've actually done um over time a few legal opinions on it we don't have the ability to regulate signs that the public bring what we do regulate is that they are safe so we can we've said to people you can't have them on a stick or you can't um, we politely ask people to keep them lower so other people can see from behind them okay. but but no, uh, no sharp sticks then but what if they say but they also have to be non-inflammatory perhaps eh? if that's the right word um, well, I, I think I, we had somebody once with something about, you know, I think it was something about, it wasn't about well, yeah, the case, oh, the case in that is we have to, we have to be very careful about free speech. If it's obviously, prof, you know, profanity, we would definitely ask that that be removed just for reasons of, of offending other people. But we have to be very careful about um, people have the right for free speech and that does include buttons and signs and all those other but things. We don't have a, was, I remember when we went through this, it was concerned, but we never did change the policy then. We can't actually. We, right, get you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> so there's no um, additions to the agenda. Can I have a motion to receive and approve? Mm -hmm. Councillor Arneson, uh, second by Mayor Froze. All in favor, show of hands. Any opposed? Motion's carried. Okay, so Wendy, we left off, or Ms. Bauer, I should say, pardon. I think we left off at part nine, didn't we? Yes, we, we'd completed 9.08, and we were moving on to 9.10. Okay. Now, Madam Chair and uh, Bauer. Clerk, <laughs> where we're actually at, though, is we didn't intend on going through the bylaw further today because of time constraints. Oh, okay. The suggestion was not to kind of pick up where we left off, but to get some direction for the work we've done so far. So if we can go to page, it's a very quick page, page B1, page 2, it has three levels of amendments. We have our amendments from April 15th in green, our amendments from June 24th in blue, and our amendments of July 22nd in red. Um, this meeting could be as simple as referring these to council to implement, and then we would go and bring those back in the bylaw, and then we would continue with our bylaw review later on uh, at the next CPC session or when it's scheduled. As you're aware, we're somewhat backlogged with CPC items, and we don't view the balance of this as coming forward till perhaps early 2020. So why this could be relevant for us is this does give greater controls for some of the issues that we've experienced so far, ranging from such things as um, well, primarily delegations, proclamations. Um, Wendy, what would you classify the, the green, the blue, and the red as really achieving? A lot of them are, are just housekeeping amendments that we've seen over the years. Um, the difference in the delegations would be to include in the policy or the bylaw, pardon me, that uh, delegations would need to be not on items going to public hearing. That was the major change there. So if something was coming, was going to go to public hearing and someone was speaking on it when it was coming to first and second reading, we've run into problems with um, some applicants trying to take all the delegation spaces on their evening that it's going for first and second, which therefore precluded other people from coming forward. So the idea is that they would be referred to the uh, public hearing as opposed to having them speak at first and second. That was the major change on that one. Um, I think the balance of it was very similar. So with that, this meeting could be as simple as referring the various levels of amendments uh, to or recommending them to council so that could actually be adopted and then a bylaw would come back as this is sitting as a committee of the whole. The other part of the package, I believe um, I've included it as um, attachment B. Uh, during our first discussion about delegations, I was requested to go and, and see what other municipalities were doing. So I surveyed the procedure bylaws for basically south of the Fraser, and that was just an easy way of drawing a line. Uh, and I've included anything different, as well as options that have been proposed um, to council in various other times. It's just been the options section. The council may wish to augment um, the delegation direction. 
Okay, um, Councillor Ferguson. Yeah, you're I, I don't, can't. <laughs> Can you? That's fine. There is it. No, it's, I'm sorry. Let me know this. Um, it, in this case, it would be a matter of, um, so the, the, the current committee would, te would forward it to council for council to direct staff to amend the bylaw with the current amendments. Could um, I make that like amendment like today or now? Yeah, and what we would do with that is we would add it to the evening or which you could bring it forward at one of the afternoon, me the afternoon meeting to be forwarded to as a, as a council direction. Okay, so I, can I do that right now? Through uh, the excuse chair? me. I'm sorry. I was getting a lesson on how to use this. What is it that you want to do? It's the consolidated draft amendments that we are discussing, and that's the amendments which are green, the April 15th, which are kind of a purpley, the June the 24th, and which are orange, the June 22nd. Uh, mm -hmm. Pardon me, July the 22nd. Yeah, and those that's right. are all the things we included, and if we put them right as amendment, right to council. Yeah, and in this case, what, what I would expect is at this point, we take those amendments, go forward, make an amending bylaw at this time, and then when we were able to conclude the discussion on the remaining part of the bylaw, we could bring another amendment forward to cover those. It just kind of, unfortunately, um, we have, uh, we're kind of backing up in CPC topics, so I'm, I'm wanting to address the ones that council's direct, directed that we need to address before Christmas. Uh, we also, unfortunately, also, unfortunately, unfortunately, um, have the budget coming forward, and that's going to take a, a significant amount of meetings. So, rather than have this sit, if we move this set of amendments forward, we complete what we need to, come back to the procedure bylaw when we have the ability to do that, and then would send any other changes through as a second amendment. Madam Chair, I'd like to make that. Motion. You'd like to make that motion, okay? Before you put the motion on, let's just. Uh, okay, I've got sure. some speakers I'll on I'll the wait. list, I'll wait. and I. I do have a query myself with regards to why would you want to do an amend, like do the bylaw twice? Um, actually, just to simplify it, because right now we're doing an amendment bylaw, it's going to be a, uh, there's going to be a significant amount of amendments that I'm going to have to go through and make sure they all match. Uh, it, it would just move the part that we have along and kind of conclude that. Okay. Councillor Long. Yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah, so, I th so if I understand this correctly, all three colors would be potentially put forward. Yes. We just need to make a motion at this meeting. It would come up in the minutes for the next meeting anyway, which would be a council action, right? We don't have to do a special motion this afternoon. Um, you, I yeah, mean, that's you right. said you don't we could, to, but I could, mean, but maybe, it could maybe it'd be better just to let it proceed as the way it's supposed yeah, it to. Is, we are scheduled to have a meeting next Monday as well, so it would just be a... It would, so it would come forward as the minutes with a recommendation from yeah, this committee. That's right. Um, so that's an interesting... I like the idea because, you know, otherwise we have to sort of continue along this path, which is fairly lengthy and windy, but um, we'll have a chance, perhaps if this motion gets entertained, to just, just to go over these one more time. Mm -hmm. Could we, I mean, without labor, you know, but. Well, we have till one o'clock, yeah. so. But my question would be, um, and I don't know, I should have gone through it maybe more carefully to see if we've addressed this notion of when we're having CPC meetings and when we're having council meetings, because uh, uh, we don't have a calendar yet for 2020, right? That's so right. I would imagine staff are looking for a direction on, on uh, setting the meeting t uh, schedule for 2020. And so if we're going to have CPCs every Monday or not, or whatever we were talking about, I guess we need to have a resolution to that. Would you not agree, Madam Chair? Um, the current bylaw actually just uh, simplifies it by saying that the meetings are scheduled as per the calendar each year. So we don't have to um, change the bylaw per se. Councils definitely can have a discussion on what they would like to see, but so long as we publish a calendar at the beginning of the year, the bylaw is covered off. And CPC aren't scheduled um, uh, as per the bylaw. Okay, so I'm just getting a reminder about that. Public hearings are not scheduled, and neither are CPC. So just our regular meetings are scheduled. That's right. And then we, the others are at the call of whatever. Is yeah, that right? in, in the case of public hearing, when we have agenda items, and in the case of, um, of the CPC, it's at the call of the mayor. Uh, and special break. close is at the call of that meeting too. Special close, yeah. They're not scheduled either. No, they're yeah, not scheduled okay, as they are special that meetings. Now, yeah. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks. Okay. Um, so, is there anybody else that has a comment before I go back to uh, Councillor Ferguson on his motion? No. Okay. So, Councillor Ferguson, back to you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Yeah, it's, I would like to make a motion that the draft, consolidated draft amendments of uh, April 15th, June the 24th, and July the 22nd uh, be sent to council. Is there a seconder for that motion? 
Councillor Arneson. All right, discussion on the motion. Do you want to go through them or no? Well, I, it would seem to me that the procedure bylaw is probably an important piece of business that we should finish up. And doing it in chunks like this doesn't appeal to me at all. I'm not going to support the motion. Okay, Councillor, or Mayor Froze, sorry. Thank you, and I appreciate those comments. And there's a lot of work still ahead of us. Um, however, we've been at this since April, and I appreciate that uh, staff, um, the comments from Ms. Bauer that, uh, you know, by breaking it up, it's helpful to her to, to um, bring forward a bylaw. It doesn't mean that the rest is not as important. We still have time. We can still work on it. But uh, to to move it forward, to... to um, basically codify the work that we've already done, uh, I think is appropriate and I will be supporting and moving forward to council. And uh, when it does land on the council table, council does have the opportunity uh, do, uh, to make amendments if they so choose and to debate it again. This is a, a, a committee and the committee has come up with some recommendations, but it still li it lies with council to approve. So I'll be supporting the motion. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Woodward. Yeah, I just want to reiterate that uh, I haven't quite decided whether to, to support the motion, and not because your points aren't good, but because I think I've expressed before that, you know, my frustration is we have items in the queue and we want to get to those. Why not just meet whenever there's an item on the agenda? If we're here on Monday anyway, and I don't quite understand, Mr. Mayor, why we don't just convene CPC every Monday while there's an item on the agenda, and then we wouldn't have been at it since April if the CPC had been convened on every Monday to get through the material. So that would be my complaint. I'll register that. I don't see why we're not convening CPC on every Monday that we're here. Thanks. Any other speakers? No? Yeah. Oh, yes, Councillor Long. Over to so you. I think in, in, the, in the terms of transparency, et cetera, uh, when, if this actually gets approved by Council to move ahead with the amendments, Will staff give a full presentation, perhaps, of what they are and go over them all again when the vote comes? Is that what you're requesting Well, I'm now? thinking that might okay. be wise. Well, let's do that then because we're only 15 minutes into the meeting. And what do you mean now? Yeah. Oh, go well, over what it well, is that's that not, we're voting uh, That's not what I meant. I meant if, if, it, if it comes, when it comes back to council. I don't, but, I don't oh, I see. That it goes. I think it might take, well, for everybody, for the public and everything else, okay. too. Okay. Well, I guess we would continue on cards. with part nine. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and could, that could I could quickly summarize them. They're pretty. Right. It shouldn't take me long if you'd like to. If it'll help move things and sure. help everyone, that would be great. Okay, so um, the first change was in uh, just in the definition section. There was a request to have um, unintentional defined. Uh, and I've simply defined it as uh, not intentional or deliberate check several dictionaries to try and come out with the best way to do that. So that's on page, uh, if you're looking at the agenda for this afternoon, it's B1, page 7. Uh, in part 4, in under inaugural meeting, uh, we've removed the calendar year in which the election was con conducted. In, re in re thinking about that, I realized that if the election happened to be in December, it, because if we had a by-election or, or something, it would be impossible to have it in the same calendar year. So it is a much simpler way of looking at it in just the next month without specifying the year. Uh, we added a line in section 5.02, which is on page 9, which says special closed council meetings may be scheduled to occur within regular afternoon or regular evening council meetings. And that is simply to cover off what we do now. 5.05 is under advertising availability of regular council meeting schedule. We've added and posted on the, in the public notice, notice posting place, which is downstairs um, on the second floor. And in section 5.12, item G, we've added that we have some items that we can release from closed council automatically, meaning we don't have to take a vote on them based on just common common requests. Uh, first one, the following items occurring at closed council meetings are considered releasable by council within the provisions that described below. Bullet point one, the names of appointed individuals and council members that have been selected for Township of Langley committees and outside organizations upon notification of the individuals. So again, that's so we don't have that long motion at the bottom. 
the names of individuals that are receiving awards or honours bestowed by the Township of Langley upon notification of the individual or family. And finally, property acquisition and disposal reports to, to Council 60 business days after the conclusion of the transaction subject to the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. So that would just automatically release all land deals without having to come back to Council to ask for the report. Mm -hmm. If I may, um, is that like a number from the Act or is it something that you just thought? Was uh, I went with the six months because that is actually in the Freedom of Information and Protection of Privacy Act. Um, you have up to 60 days to release something that's going to be releasable. So it just seemed that that matched up quite nicely and it would give us time to remove any personal information we need to. Okay, that makes sense. Thank yeah. you. Uh, 5.17, uh, open meeting requirement. We've added end community charter requirements. So the full 5.17 reads, with the exception of closed meetings called under clause 5.12, all meetings are open to the public to observe in support of transparency and the community charter requirements. 5.18, we've added, council may have a five minute break after two consecutive hours of a council meeting. Again, mm -hmm. the key point. May. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, this brings us down to the statutory public hearings, uh, which is page B1, page 12, under six, section 6.09. Council motions for third reading or third reading and final adoption may be by two thirds majority vote of council and without debate considered at the same meeting in which the public hearing for the bylaw has concluded upon confirmation that the township of the township clerk or deputy clerk has no further written submissions uh, have been received. Okay, so basically if we're at a public hearing and council so chooses um, to hear third or third and final, it would take a two thirds majority without debate, so we don't have to debate it twice. Um, on whether they would hear that. And then there would be the second vote, which would be the regular third. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sure. Two thirds of the, of the council present. So if there's eight or seven or whatever, it would be two thirds of yes. whoever council present. Two thirds majority, so two thirds of quorum. The people. That, yeah. Okay, like today, I'd have to get my calculator out and figure out what uh, that would be. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> And in 6.10, which just goes to kind of administratively follow that, the motion to consider third reading or third and final or adoption will appear on the public hearing agenda after each application. That's just to make sure the public is advised that that could happen. The last change that I can, oh, oh, last, here we go, 9.08. Uh, the speaking time for each council member has gone from 10 to 5. And that's it. Oh. Um, no, there's a few. That's as far as we've gotten going through it. Oh, here we go. Um, 11.08 on page 19 reads a motion of censure, censure any. <laughs> A motion to censure any member of council requires an affirmative vote of two-thirds. Uh, part 13, which is the delegation part that we have discussed, uh, I'll just summarize by saying again, this was where we had the uh, anything on for first and second reading uh, applicants would be referred to the public hearing. Uh, we also added a clause in 13.04, which says council may choose to deny a scheduled delegation by a majority vote. The motion may occur, may occur during the agenda approval of a motion at the next scheduled council meeting or at the same meeting the delegation is scheduled to appear. If you go to Appendix A, which is page 24, Dating myself, so it used to be a non-table late delegation. In this case, what we've done is uh, late delegations are only applicable if it is an on-agenda item. So, if someone submits something late after the agenda has been printed, if it's related to the agenda, we would schedule it so long as it's less. It's still, we haven't exceeded five. If it is the uh, not related to the agenda, we forward it to the next meeting, and that was for transparency. We found that we had people. 
I don't want to say purposefully, uh, well, some people realized that if they put it in on Friday, no one would see it. Let's just put it that way. So it wouldn't show up on the agenda. They wouldn't, people would be unaware of that topic coming to council. So in the interest of transparency, if it's going to come to council, it has to be on the agenda, the subject. Yes, the, the, my question, my only question was that you, you, you folks decide, no one, if there's less than five, you decide whether something would be appropriate or not for this late on table. Sometimes you used to get the If it's time sensitive, it, yes, yes, you'll definitely see it. If okay. it's a late on item, on table item, it's actually just, it doesn't need to be accepted by council. It follows the rules and therefore council has already accepted it. Yeah, I just wanted to double check on that. Do, do we get many of those? I haven't seen too many lately. We don't get many of them at all. Uh, it used to be a significant problem prior to saying it had to be an on-agenda item, and once it was known that it had to be an on-agenda item, they just kind of went away. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, Councillor Laurent. Yeah, so what if it's the 6th or 7th? How does that work? Because you said it's only if there's five um, delegations already. That's right? put before Council for a vote. Uh, it requires a two-thirds majority in respect of people's time. So if it's, on, if it's on a topic on the agenda and it is the sixth one, we would bring it before council and council would vote on whether they would accept that sixth application. And that application would be held, uh, I mean, their delegation would be at the same time as the other five yes. or would it be at the end of the meeting? No, like it used because to be? it is, if, in that case, it's an on-agenda item. So putting it at the end of the agenda would not Doesn't be really, helpful. Yeah, I get you. Okay, thanks. I had a question with regards to 3.04. And this is the one where council may choose to deny a scheduled delegation by a majority vote. Mm -hmm. And um, as I recall, Mr. Lidstone had some suggestions for us around that. Has that been incorporated into this? No, that's, that is included under options um, under the attachment B, as I would need direction from council to include any of those. At this time, they're not. Oh, so we're going to go to that list after this then. If you would like to add anything further to the delegations, that's definitely something we can discuss. I would just need direction on to um, which of the options that have been provided by other other councils, other bylaws, um, or Mr. Lidstone. Option. Well, I had a question with regards to that, but let's wait till we get there, I guess. Okay. So if we... We're, we're good? Okay. So continuing on with Appendix A, as you know, we had to re we've removed the invocation, as we found out we actually can't do that. Um, the First Nation, and First Nation and Community Welcome has been added. Um, we do, we've taken out approval of a delegation request as they are approved as per the agenda or as per the bylaw. Uh, we've added association and other government ad agencies, um, items from prior meetings on the afternoon, and removed information items from special closed meetings. We just simply include those. Um, that was a, actually a duplicate. On the regular evening, items from prior meetings has been added. Uh, the mayor's report has been changed to mayor and council report. And we've added items having prior notice of motion. And in special closed council, we've removed council uh, approval of closed council meeting agenda as that's simply a repeat of the one above it. And Appendix B, what we've done is add the, change the wording on the bottom. In the green text, you can see that what we've done is change it so council can have uh, third and third and final readings at the meeting and the public is advised. Um, just as a point of clarification on that, so how is this going to work? Is, will the mayor call for uh, a vote? on each item? I think if a council member wished to make a motion at the end of the item, that they could make that motion. Um, and again, that would be, a, as we discussed, that we didn't want to have to um, debate things twice. That would be a, a motion that a council member could put forward, whether it was the mayor or another member of council. And then we would have uh, no debate on it, and council would simply vote whether they wish to have third reading. And that would require the two thirds then? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, in respect of people's time, yes. <clears throat> So it's going to be initiated by council. By a council member or at the uh, by a council member. That's right. Yeah. Uh, sorry, here for us. I, I believe uh, six point one zero covers that because it says the motion to consider third reading or third reading and final adoption will appear at the public hearing agenda after each application. So there would be a motion to consider. It'll be written each. for you and under yeah. a clerk's note, but it it's whether clerk's council note, take. But it's un, but so uh, every public hearing C one. Yes. B below it will have that clerk's note, so there's a reminder, and the that, chair could then call for it. Yeah, if there's and, the, no and the idea is to ensure that the public understands that this may occur. 
Yes. Um, so. But as it, we're not putting it on as a motion, as it is just a clerk's okay. note, it can be done or not. After each public hearing? Yes. C1, C2, there'll be that clerk's note. So That's it's a right. reminder for everyone. Okay. Thanks. Councillor Long? Yeah, and, and no debate. Right. No debate on that. that. As we discussed it earlier, Council was concerned that we would end up debating everything twice. Because if you're going to debate whether you're going to have the motion, people may talk about the motion itself, and then we go back and debate the motion again. So in order to keep time and it's just right. a... So if, if it... Okay, so the motion's made, it has to be seconded, vote's taken immediately. If, right. it's, if it fails, well, simply it'll go to the... It'll like go to the next meeting. it normally does come to the next meeting. Right. If it passes, then we can debate the... That's right. ...the thing out of it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And that actually is all the uh, amendments we have currently have. All right. So, any further discussion on the motion that Councillor Ferguson has put in front of us, which is to proceed with recommendation to Council accepting the changes made to date? No? All right, I'll call the question. All in favor, raise your hands. <laughs> Okay, any opposed? Two opposed. Motion's carried. All right, so I guess we'll pick up now with the part nine, continuing through with part nine, or was there another approach you wanted to take? I'm, I'm fine with, ever, I'll, with, with whatever. Um, there was some mention of talking about the delegations and the, the list that's been provided, but I'm fine to start with the delegations or part nine, whichever works best for council. Delegations. So that would be attachment B um, as suggestions from other jurisdictions or suggestions we've received from Mr. Lidstone. You want to do that one? Okay, I think they want to do that one, so we'll do that one. Where, what page is that on? That is page 31. Page 31. All right. So as I said, the, um, the first section that just says options are, are ones that have been spoken about by Mr. Lidstone, uh, and the other ones are surveys of procedure bylaws that I've done for municipalities south of the Fraser. Uh, I just chose south of the Fraser because that seemed like an easy line to follow. Uh, as you can see, delegations are not um, outlined in the community charter, so there's everything from uh, places like Richmond that have no rules, but it seems no one comes. Uh, to places uh, like Abbotsford that have a significant number of rules. It just depends on what council would like to see. Councillor Law? Things that you can't do. Is that what this is? No, this is this is a list of options that council may add to the procedure bylaw. Where it says City of White Rock, for example, it's got a list of bullet yeah, points. Yeah, there's, those, these there's things, limitations. These are things you cannot yes, it bring would, a yeah. delegation to. Yeah, so in, in White Rock... Cases? In the White Rock, it would be a matter, um, any matter related to a public hearing, any matter um, it, on, which is in current and undergoing local service area, service area or counter petition, any matter on a prosecution which has commenced, uh, publicly tendered contracts, and any subject that's beyond the jurisdiction of council. So those are their limits. Of what, I'm, what I'm trying to ascertain that in all these boxes, mm -hmm. these bullet points of things that will disqualify you as a that's right. delegate. Okay. They, so they would not be accepted as a delegation. Okay, uh, Mayor Froze. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, so I know we've had some discussions regarding uh, the number of delegations within a calendar year from certain, you know, from certain delegations. And I'm just looking through the the green. Did we? That's not added in there. No, yeah, at this time it's like not. Um, yeah, the yeah, one example I did find of that was actually from the um, city of Abbotsford. Their way of managing. Uh, people who repeatedly come is to say that individuals may only appear once annually on the same topic and not more than once every three months on a different topic. So it's just a matter of, it's, it, it allows for uh, everyone to have a say, yeah. especially when you're dealing with the limitation of trying to keep you know, five delegations, you want the whole community and all stakeholders to have a say. It just manages the, the people who we hear more from. That's an option that we could add if we wanted to. If we point. wanted to add it, yes. Um, and have you seen that in any other ones? I was just thinking, you know, maybe it's, you know, say you have no delegations that night and a person wants to come for the second time in the quarter and there are no delegations, but if there are, you know, delegations. I, have, I actually them. haven't seen it no. um, anywhere else. Um, delegations in some places are managed very differently. In Delta, they have a 15-minute before council 
and you come in, you sign up, and council has 15 minutes to hear everybody they can for no more than two minutes. Yep. And it, when the meeting starts, that's it. Oh, yeah, I've heard of those too. Yeah, yeah. Those so that's, that's quite often I find this is the way they're managed. Um, it's simply council's available for 15 minutes. Whoever gets in, gets in. Other than that, you don't. Interesting. Thanks. Okay, Councillor Woodward. See any jurisdictions that limited the time from five maybe to three? No, the, no. It was, it was fives and tens is what I've seen. Fives and tens, yeah. okay. I didn't so maybe that's one option for us. I mean, um, that might force people to, to be a bit more considered in their submissions and maybe send us a written submission and then, you know, maybe do a very quick presentation of it rather than what we're seeing, which is, you know, people even doubling up on, you know, getting 10 minutes because they do back-to-back -back forms yes. and things like that. So maybe there's a way you could amend the bylaw to prevent them from doing that at the least, and maybe council could consider a three-minute which then, of course, could be extended, and the chair has some discretion there, I'm assuming. It, it could be done. Um, be an so issue. But if they were told they only have three minutes, maybe maybe we would get more um, high-level presentations rather than, than these things that go on and on and on sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that would be possible. Um, just I just want to make sure there. I understand. So when you say back-to-back, -back, it's, it's the individuals or... Uh, organizations that have realized if they put in two delegations, they come to 10 minutes. Yeah, we saw that yeah. recently with one of the community associations yeah. where they want to present. Basically, they turn the delegation into a presentation yes. format, and that's not really the intent. Yes, and, and then, we of could... course, we also have other groups that are coming, not really of any ask of council, simply to advertise their event or their organization, and there's no ask at the end. Uh, maybe there's some way to, to look at the bylaw, even if it doesn't make it into the amendments going forward now, but in the long run here to look at some way to maybe address those? I, I could definitely write the language. If there is no ask, then why are you delegating? And then if, if you have some community associations that, to me, are, are abusing the, the intention of that, of that yeah, delegation. And form. given direction, I would come up with language that would work. Okay, well, I'll just leave it out there for now. Thanks. Okay. Oh, sorry. Uh, well, I was up Ferguson, Council that, Director, yes, I think Councilor I'm up. Ferguson, I'm, yeah. I'm, one of us is up. We're both up. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, can I just, just follow up a little bit? Okay, you go on, ahead, on, and I'll go what Councilor Woodward was saying. Translink Mayor's Council recently went to three-minute uh, delegations, and uh, the, you know, but then the people we see there are usually have very concise and, and they're very good at it. But uh, we did go to three. It's yeah, something to find out what others are doing, uh, and you know, some municipalities do that. But it's always that balance of listening to the. Some municipalities have, like you say, they have a, a wide open, and I wouldn't want to see that where there is people just come up and speak, but then you get a real Donnybrook. But uh, so it, it really varies, and so it'd be good to see what others do. But we did go to three, um, and and the mayor's council don't ask questions. It's basically they present, and, unless it's less it's of clarifying. So it moves along pretty quick, and there's a certain amount of time period allotted to delegations. So there's different ways of doing it. Yeah, just want to comment. Thanks. Okay. okay Sorry, yeah, Councillor Ferguson. Next. Oh yeah, thank you. Um, I also wanted to say I, I don't have a problem with a five minute. The trouble is, and I've seen it. Uh, the five minute, it could be a one minute presentation, but I've seen question after question after question from council, and you can turn a one minute delegation into uh, an hour. And I don't, that's one thing I don't think council has control over. You, you can't write that up in the policy. You can't put that into a bylaw. It's, it, you don't have a control over that kind of a um, thing. Technically, we could put in the policy that the, num the maximum time, allowable time for discussion of a delegation is time X, but it would be up to council and the chair to manage that. I mean, that's, so I understand what you're doing here. I appreciate it, but it still comes down to a question after a question after a question, especially on an, an item that is somewhat controversial. Anyway, I just wanted to point that out. Yeah, uh, fair, fair enough, uh, Councillor Ferguson. Um, I think the five minutes um, is reasonable because not everybody who comes to speak to council is a practiced speaker and a three minute timeline puts an additional pressure on them and they may not be as effective in speaking as they could be if they had the five so I'm okay with the five I agree with uh, councillor Ferguson that um, maybe council needs to be a little more judicious about how many questions are asked, but I personally don't want to limit the number of questions that can be asked. Um, I'm going to these options that are here. Uh, the first set, which is the Mr. Lidstone set, I agree pretty much with all of those except a request for funding because everybody or the vast majority of delegations to us ask us for money 
right? You can't say you can't come and ask us for money because how else will they ask us for money if they need money? So I'd be supportive of putting a motion forward to um, take uh, the, the Lidstone list minus the request okay. for funding. Okay, Councillor Long, you're next. Oh, okay. Um, right. So you're just thinking about putting that forward. So I was still still thinking about the delegations themselves. Sometimes it's quite a bit of time getting their PowerPoint up. Um, I see you folks having to run back and forth and help people out. How many jurisdictions actually allow them to use our? Um, because I mean that that turns. I don't actually it, know. I don't know how. Yeah, it that, would. It depends on, quite honestly, how their room setup is. Uh, we, I wonder if they couldn't submit those in advance to count, they, and then we well, have hard do. copies, or, or we could have it on our gadgets, then we don't have to have. Wait they for actually, a few minutes. they have. Ideally, we're supposed to get them by noon on Friday, so we can load them. Uh, we still get them later. They're actually for this evening. Any delegations that submit anything, it's already loaded, um, and we try our best to make sure they're up there. I, it just unfortunately depends a little bit on computer literacy if yeah, they know how to yeah, open the files. Yeah. Uh, quite often, I think when we have the greatest problem is when someone who is computer literate has put the presentation together and the speaker is not. Right. And that's right. where we really run into troubles. But that's not something we can control. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mayor Froze. So if there are no other speakers, if you wish. I, Madam Chair, I'd move that the uh, list, uh, what do we call it, the Lidstone list, the options, other than the one that says a request for funding, uh, be moved to be added. As, how would we add that? Is this an appendix or is it in, in the bylaw? I will find a place to fit. Find a place to put it. So I'll, I'll move that that list as, it's, as it stands, except for a request for funding, bullet point. Okay, is there a seconder added. for the motion? Um, Councillor Kunst seconds. All right, discussion on the motion. Um, who, did somebody just click? Yes, Councillor Long. Yeah, how, now on Abbotsford, the, the final bullet talks about only once annually. Mm -hmm. And, and that's our actually, final bullet talks about it. So is that the same thing? It's or basically is better? the same thing, just written a little differently. So you can only come once a year. No, no once, four times a year. Yeah, once, once every quarter unless the organization is statutorily authorized to be heard by council. So that means public hearing. It's, it's to cover off for the public hearing. You don't want to say someone can't come if it's a public hearing. If it's something that needs public input, if they've been, if they've been that quarter, then they would still come for that. Okay, but the Abbotsford one says they can only come once a year. We could definitely change that. So it would be, um, in Abbotsford's case, what they've done is they've said once per year on the same topic. So someone can't come, can't come, uh, again on the same topic. If they wanted to come on a different topic, they could still come every quarter. Oh, so that's wrong then. It says every three months on the same topic. It should say different topic there. Oh, then. yes. Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I had a question too with regards to um, the promotion of a political party or, or of a candidate for elected office. Because I've seen this in the past. I'm sure you have too, where people who are running for... Uh, a council seat uh, will come in support of some sort of a, an organization in the community. Mm -hmm. So the wording there, does it, um, I mean, I could, it, to me when I'm reading that, it means if you're running for office and you want to talk about running for office, you that's, can't make a delegation. Exactly. That's what it's intended to mean. If you're coming about something completely different, yeah. we, we can't stop people can't from coming stop. for that. Okay. If, if you are a person who you know, just wants to be in the public eye and has, a, you know, has another reason for coming, then it would be very difficult for me to say, um, once you're declared candidate, you can't come at all. Okay. And um, in the case of uh, uh, individuals that would want to come more than once a quarter. Is there a way out for them to do that? Yes, I would have something in there that they could a request could be put before council. It would be in that case. It would be a very. It would be to vary to bylaw essentially. So it would have to go to council for council to accept that. Okay. Okay. So, so they there could, because I'm just thinking if there's an emergency in yeah. the community and. Well, no. Yeah. If it was an emergency in the community, I w I would waive it. It's. It would just be, if it's timely or important or an emergency to the community or something, then we could definitely, we'll find a way to get it in. Okay. Any further discussion before I call for the question? Yes, Councillor Ferguson. The request for funding, we would keep that as a legitimate delegation? Yes, we've crossed that one out. Yeah. That's what I mean. I'm crossing that. I just... 
Okay, Councillor Woodward. Yeah, just looking at this, I, I didn't study this very much, so I'm just studying this a little bit as we're discussing it. Um, the purpose of, or subject that council reasonably determines is not in the public interest of the community. How does council reasonably determine that? We could ask council. I would bring it before council. Okay, so you would bring it before us. Mm -hmm. We would say yes, we'll hear this delegation or no, yes. we won't. I'm assuming in cases like that, it's not going to be time sensitive, so I would simply have it inserted on an agenda. If it was time sensitive, I'd include it, include it at, before council. Hmm, yeah. I don't think I want to having, I mean, take more time discussing whether to hear the delegation than to just hear the delegation. Okay. So, um, and if it's reasonably determined not in the public interest of the community, then in theory, the, you know, there won't be a majority to take any action on it. Okay. Um, so like I'm not, well, there. I don't want to start getting into micromanaging this list. I'll just defer to the council. If it's been moved to adopt them all except for one, maybe the mover can, can respond to that. And then maybe if also, if maybe you can, spend time and show us how it's going to look in the procedure bylaw and then maybe you could think about each one and then maybe we could see how it reads in the actual procedure bylaw as suggested and then maybe we could pull a few out at that time rather well, than as, try to data here this now. is going to come back it has to be adopted yeah. by council anyway so it's going to come but back it's not going to make it into the round we just sent to council right so this is going to come right. back next year sometime what we're working on right now um are unless you? i'm direct i can be directed to include it now director to do it yeah. Now, now and include okay, it when well, it comes forward. And I guess we can also debate it further when it hits the council table Definitely. as a drafted bylaw. That's the intent. I'm not sure how much um, interest there is going to be in that, though. I've, if we've discussed it here, then to discuss it again. Uh, so I I'll just agree. leave it there for others, but I won't make a move an amendment to remove it. But um, that seems like a pretty wide berth um, to, to not have a delegation. And some of these others, I think I could come up with similar rationale, but, but overall agree with the intent. Thing. So are you interested, Councillor Woodward, in striking that one too? I'll just hear from others. Maybe the mover can speak to it first. Yeah, okay. All right, Mayor Rose. Thank you. Um, I, I like this because um, I think it gives some ability of council to make some decisions. I think it still has to be a two-thirds two -thirds vote of council. Is that correct? Yes, because it would be a vari variation of the bylaw. That's right. Um, but there are some very obvious, and I don't know what they are today, but having this in here, I can't see it being imposed too often, but there might be something that comes along, and at least it gives gives council and staff the ability to say no to something that's way off base. It could be some hate group where the Hells Angels want to come and talk about their charity party or something. We don't want to have the Hells Angels here, and we can say this isn't in the public interest. I mean, there it gives us that reason, but it would have to be fairly significant, I think, and, and council is still... You know, I think uh, as to what Councilor Woodward says, I think so people here say, no, that's, we can't eliminate them because of that. That's, you know, just because one person on council doesn't like them. But significant, you know, how do we say no to, if we're going to have an open delegation process, how do we say no to an organized crime organization wanting, wanting to come here uh, and discuss some project that they're on? Uh, or something, I'm yeah, just like picking Yeah, their extremes. annual motorcycle annual drive. Motor, yeah. yeah. So Toys it gives us kids. that kind of a spot to put those without getting it to, at least it's in bylaw. So I think it's good. I don't think it'll be abused. And if it is, council can certainly address it at the time. So those are my comments, thanks. Okay, and um, that raises a good point because, um, for example, renting our facilities to groups that we don't agree with, can does this capture that kind of scenario as well? The delegations, but it is similar. I, I, I would say it was similar. Yeah. yeah. Okay, next speaker is Councillor Long. Oh, it's, sorry, it should be Long. Not it should be Long. Yeah. Not me? Okay, I'll put the... Who is yes, it? it is you. Okay. So how... Okay, now I'm confused because it seems that this is pretty straightforward for staff to determine except that one. So you, the staff won't make that determination or they will... I if, mean, you said you were going to ask Council, but that... Well, if, I, I think many of them will be stri very, very straightforward. Hmm. But on the occasion when it's not straightforward and through discussion with Mr. Back, and if, if it's something that definitely needs council's decision, then we'll definitely bring that forward. Um, I don't anticipate a lot of them, quite honestly. We don't have many now that, that are this problem. So I don't anticipate that. But it would be... So really it's allowing... It's, it's notifying the delegate that council may that's right. deny it. But you yeah. wouldn't... I don't think staff could automatically deny it because who's going to know the answer to that question? And council always... We have changed the bylaw already to say council has the ability to deny any delegation at the meeting. But, but, so. you, but staff would have to bring it forward and, 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 
and council has to decide then. It's not like the other ones that says you wouldn't even bring it forward if the person had already been there. That's right. If there's any question, right? if there's any question of, of how it should be adjudicated, of course it would come to council. Yeah, I this, can only this follow I thought the rules. This was a, was a highlight in, in, in Lidstone's thing. He, that he, he said that this is the one that you can use mm -hmm. without fear, right? What about point four in the city of Abbotsford? I think we should add that one. Uh, <laughs> then we can just blame the mayor. <laughs> I'm using a cup. Okay, Councillor Woodward. Yeah, so let me just illustrate with an example. Because um, I think what I wrote down here was, uh, for my notes later, was uh, criteria question mark. So mm -hmm. criteria for you to not sort of be telling the public, well, I, me, Ms. Bowers, determined that this may be... Uh, not in the public interest of the community, so I have to go and get counsel to determine that. So mm -hmm. what would be the criteria for you to, to have that conversation with a member of public prior to bringing it to council? I'm trying to figure out the best way to describe it. Um, I think you're dealing with um, instances where there may be controversy over what the individual is bringing forward. So there are instances where we know that there, it will cause controversy. Uh, for the general delegations coming in for an ask of saying, I would like X number of dollars for my community organization, those aren't going to cause controversy. For a, say, a swim, which I we recently saw. I was just about to ask that. You already read my mind. Yeah, so I, that I one would have been definitely have said flagged. this is going to be a problem. Yeah, because of course some items are controversial and then some are fake controversy as right. well, right? Where it's just manufactured controversy for the sake of whatever their objectives are. So you'd have to make a distinction, I guess, and I guess we could see how it goes with this if yes. we, we want some leeway no, like for I said, this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't make the decision solely on my own. I would be yeah. speaking with Mr. And then you've Bacchus. also, you know, another Woodward loophole you're closing, you'd prevent, and you'd only give me four a year if I become a member of the public again, which maybe is very possible. You're only going to give me four a year to, uh, to come to council. I don't think you came more than four times a year, begin with, so I, I think we're okay. That was more judicious than that? I think, yeah. I think that, you know, that I think it's weird, though. I think it, it's, it's rather than once a quarter, maybe four a year would be better or three a year would be better so that if you use one and then something else comes up in the next agenda that you really want to speak to, now you can't. So you have to go find someone else to do it for you. So maybe rather than being that strict to once per quarter, we could achieve the same objective with some flexibility and, and say you have three per year. So I, I don't know if people generally like that idea. Um, or we well, just, once a quarter is four a year. Yes, but once per quarter. So if you if you delegate in January or whatever the calendar lines up as, and then another thing comes up in February that you really want to speak to, you can't now. So uh, you know you could achieve the same objective, which is to limit their quantity per year and even drop it to three, but then still give someone some flexibility. They don't have to engineer someone else to delegate for them. Thanks. Just a suggestion. So you don't want to make that a motion? Well, I'll let's hear from the mover again. If that's okay. All. It's a good okay. Mayor Froze? Thanks. It's a, that's a good point. Although I think we still have, I think this is a, hmm, how do I say it? I think this is a good one for those that might be frivolous and say, okay, well, there's a rule here. I can only come once per quarter. But for those that have something that is on the next agenda they need to do, we still have the ability to waive it. How would you handle that? So somebody came along and says, it just came to the January meeting. And in February, it's like, you know, I want to speak to this item on the agenda, but the bylaw doesn't allow me to. Are we going to, you know, there is that ability for council to waive that. I would definitely, if, How if, would it, you was, handle that? if it was a legitimate request yeah. based on, it, on something new, yeah. I would definitely bring that before council yeah. and, and just flag it and say that, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that gives us that safety valve with, where those who are just going to be providing frivolous, they just want to keep coming and coming and coming. It says, oh, I can only come four times. But they're going to come now and they have something legit like council woodward says that we do have the ability so i'm kind of on the fence on this one i, I like your idea but then you, you burned your four and it's december you know it's the fifth one so i think we still allow people to come five times under this bylaw with council approval so it still gives a puts the control in council i think and allows people who have reasonable requests yep. to be heard so i don't know that's what i would think maybe leaving this is good and then allowing that ability because of It'll, it'll occur for the one who wants to come the fifth time legitimately. They have something really legitimate. It's affecting them. It's, mm -hmm. you know. So. No, we wouldn't want to limit those. We would, okay. we would find a way. Okay, thanks. Councillor Arneson. Mm -hmm. 
I just want to mention the obvious. I think Councillor Woodward brought it up that people can delegate their delegation to somebody else if they really want to put something forward. I mean, and in a way, sometimes there is an overlapping issue of an individual who seeks uh, personal uh, ego gratification potentially for appearing over and over again or whatever their intention is. But um, I, I do see that if, if we're attempting to try and limit, potentially, to hear about something from a party, we still could fall into the same trap of that person, just it's like a tag team, or we'll find somebody else to come along and talk about it instead. I, I suspect if it is about the person, not the issue, there won't be a tag team. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, Councillor Ferguson. Yeah, I think I agree with what Mostly everybody's been saying there's always another way of doing something. Uh, it's funny, if you just look at the city of Langley, they have like two two particular points. But the, the, I know that for a sec, you know, they, the topic does not fall within a jurisdiction of council. I mean, I don't know how many, they're a smaller community, you probably don't get how many times they uh, have done that. But I, I uh, through speculation, I've heard that they've send out letters to folks and they just tell them at the door please don't come all sorts of things and it probably not in a policy but they do do things uh, in a in a different way i know that we probably the township probably couldn't do that but it, some jurisdictions are able to say get away with things uh, as other larger communities aren't um now back to piggybacking on an issue, which if some person can't come, the next person would. I don't know what we could do to solve that problem other than trying to determine at the council level, you know, what's going to fall within our purview and what's not. Anyway, that was my only comment. Councillor Law. Yeah, thanks. I was just wondering on this item, the promotion of commercial projects and services, if that would begin to address what we've heard from other councils today, where groups are coming just to promote their the cause which can be a worthy cause it wouldn't be commercial but um, I guess that's not what what, what you're proposing or no, what's in here is is yeah. totally commercial like we had the guy trying to sell us the the, 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 the signs yes and then we had the pot guy who was trying to sell us his services too cause, although he's a nice chap but. it would be more you know, specified toward people who want to sell us things what about the case of the Green Party and they're wanting us to have a climate action emergency. Would that fall under political parties? Because they clearly pushed it as a Green Party initiative. They did, and in this case, I would probably have said that, yes, you can come speak on climate, but you cannot come speak as, as a party platform knowing there was an election coming. Okay. It would be handled that way. It's like, yes, by, by all means, climate, important. Subject, yes. Um, there is an upcoming federal election. Coming as Green Party, no. Okay. Well, in the interest of time, as we're down to the last five minutes, I'd like to suggest that uh, we move forward with this and actually forward it to uh, Ms. Bauer to include in the set of changes that she's going to be bringing forward, as we are clearly going to have another uh, round of changes to this bylaw if any of these categories is not working after we've tried it out for the next three months or so, we can adjust it then. So it's like, let's use this as a pilot test. So uh, have we voted on these? Um, no. We actually had a motion to move it forward uh, by the mayor and second by Councillor Kunst. Okay, and sure, uh, just let me get you here. Go ahead. Just really easy on, so I'll make an amendment and that, and that uh, this be forwarded to uh, the next council meeting. Is that, is that what you need? Forwarded with the package. Forwarded with the package, okay. Okay. So seconder to that amendment, uh, Councillor Arneson. All right, let's vote on the amendment. Any discussion on the amendment before we vote? No. Okay. All, um, show of hands. All in favor of the amendment? Okay. Carried unanimously. And on the main motion as amended. Any discussion? No. Okay. Show of hands. Carried unanimously. All right. So, uh, in the interests of time, uh, let's uh, have a motion to adjourn. And our next uh, time that we're back, I guess we're picking up again with the Part 9 rules, right? Yes. Okay. So, motion to adjourn. Okay.
Councillor <laughs> Councillor Kunst, second by Mayor Froze. All in favor? <laughs> Carried. All right.